and you see I'm giving it time to melt. Okay. So when you're working in the studio and you're soldering or grinding glass or cutting glass or anything, the first thing you want to remember is to adhere to all of the safety precautions. Those safety precautions are your safety precautions and should be applied to all of everyone within your studio. So when we're grinding glass or cutting glass and you don't wear glasses, please make sure you have a pair of safety glasses in your studio. You want to make sure that you have a dust mask and you want to make sure that you have correct and proper ventilation in your studio while you're soldering. In, in, in fact, if you had a small ceiling fan in your studio or have a, can have a window open and a small fan, just some air moving in. So just remember, when you're soldering, you wanna make sure that you have great ventilation, and that is what we're talking about today. The top 10 tips for soldering stained glass. Once we have our glass cut and we have it ground, now we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we clean it. I like to use 70% isopropyl alcohol because not only does it clean the glass really well, but it also evaporates and won't leave a film on the edge so that your, your copper foil will stick correctly. Now, second of all, you wanna make sure that your copper foil is not oxidized. If it's oxidized, kind of just peel off a little bit of it. You, you might wanna peel off a little bit and say, oh, well, you know, that looks pretty trashy. So we'll get rid of that and now we'll start right here on this end. Now, we've talked about cleaning our glass. We're using isopropyl alcohol and now we wanna make sure that the copper foil it's not oxidized, it looks really nice, and by keeping it in this caddy, you'll find that it doesn't oxidize as fast. And then what you wanna do, we're using Blackback 732nd copper foil here, and we're gonna copper foil this piece right here in this kite. So I like to start my copper foil about a quarter of an inch beyond where I'm gonna stop, and then I like to put it I like to look at it this way. I like to look straight down on it where I can use my fingers. And I try not to touch these edges. You don't really want to touch these edges because the oil from your hand will get on the edges. And what happens when you do that is that, again, the foil won't stick because it doesn't stick to oil. So I like to drag my fingers up and I like to turn the glass all at the same time. And when I do my overlap here, I just take a small pair of scissors and we're gonna clip it, let it, it extends out beyond that corner just a little tiny bit, and then we'll flip that over and we'll make sure that we put that down. Now I just take the edges of my fingers and help get this bent over first around the edge of the glass before I do any kind of burnishing or anything. And you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure now that you're getting ready to burnish your glass, that when you're burnishing it, you pull it towards you. Like that. On both sides, you wanna do both sides. And I always make sure that I take the edge of my fid here and I, burnish it on the edge. What this, what this does is it heats the glue up on your copper foil, also flattens it out nice, doesn't give you any little wrinkles or anything, but then take and make sure, okay, that you pull it to you. And I always, always keep an X-Acto knife on my bench when I'm copper foiling, simply for this little reason right here. That little reason, I'm gonna point on it and we're just gonna take that and we're getting rid of it, okay? Because we don't we don't need that in there. Anywhere copper foil goes, the solder is gonna stick to it, and you want this to look really nice, so we don't need that copper foil. And now we need to talk a little bit about soldering irons. You know, uh, they make 100-watt uh, soldering irons and 80-watt soldering irons and 45-watt soldering irons. I, I use two different irons. I use an 80-watt soldering iron, and it's just, it's, it's, this is a Weller right here. This is a Weller 1175, and I want you to see that. When, I'm, when I get done with this, I clean that tip off so that it's ready to go when I get ready to work. So this one has a, the, the tip actually 
comes out kind of like screwing in a light bulb. And this is a 80 watt iron. And I use, you, you know, I, I enjoy really using this because if you see, it's got a quarter inch chisel tip on it. And I can put that up on the edge and I'll show you in just a little bit on how to use utilize this soldering iron. So, and then, you know, Weller makes another one. They make a 100 watt iron. This is a heavy duty 100 watt iron. Has a 700 degree tip in it. And of course you can manipulate these, undo, this little screw right here, this tip comes right out, okay? So once that tip comes out, your job is, your job on this tip here, because it does remove so easy, is gonna be so that you can keep the heat down near the bottom. I'm just gonna show you a little trick. If you'll take your tip out and steel wool it and get rid of any of that corrosion right there, your tip, the heat will go back down into the tip much easier and you'll find that there's really nothing wrong with your iron other than the, that you need to clean it a little bit. And the same way goes for up here, up around this edge here. You can see where this gets hot. You can clean that, clean all that area right there. But when you're done with it, you need to take a damp cloth. Be, when you turn the heat off, allow it to cool just a little bit and then take a damp cloth and I'll show you how to clean that coming right up. So as we move, as we move along in this process about the top 10 tips for soldering stained glass, we're to the point now where we need to talk a little bit about flux. I like to use ruby flux, and you'll see I keep it in gallons. So we, we are able to use, because we use quite a bit of it, we're building a lot of stained glass windows. But you'll find that if you trim your brush up a little bit, I'll show you in a minute how to do that, and we will, you won't be using as much ruby flux or any other flux. Now the ruby flux I like because it doesn't smoke and it doesn't put off these gosh awful fumes. So, and it doesn't make the tip of your tongue uh, tingle and burn, okay? So if that's happening to you while you're soldering, you need better ventilation in your studio, but you also probably should change up your flux. If you're using a paste flux, I, that's just my opinion now. Just like, you know, a lot of other things, I have an opinion on things that I use and these chemicals here are available on our Amazon storefront store and at Amazon. And the chemicals that we recommend that we use here in our studio are available on that store. So this is one gallon of the Ruby Flux. What's available on our store are the pints and the two pint collection so that you're allowed, you can, you know, you don't really, some of you may not need gallons like we do. But anyway, I just want to let you know, we use Ruby Flux here in the glass studio, and I love it. Now on our brush, I want you to see, when you get your little brush, it's got a really floppy head on it, and it's a big and bushy. If you'll cut your brush down to that length right there off the handle, you'll find that you don't use as much flux as ever, and you won't have all that spitting and sputtering and uh, like little bubbles popping up, because what's happening, if your iron, if you're working with your iron, you got too much flux, that iron is, you know, 400 or 500, 600 degrees, and it's going to boil that flux right away. And there's nothing, y'all, nothing in the rules of stained glass that say you have to boil your flux before you solder. <laughs> All right, so now we're still talking a little bit about flux, but I want to show you how to apply your flux correctly. So the first thing we're going to do on this kite project is we're going to tack solder it in place so that it doesn't move around on us. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little flux brush that we've already trimmed the top of it, put it into our flux, and then shake it a little bit, okay? So we're gonna put a little dab there, a little dab there, a little dab there. We're gonna right there where that all crosses in there, and we're gonna put a little bit right here. So let's just squeeze this back together. Now, in some of our, in our videos, you've seen me talk about the temperature that I like to work at. I want you to see, I like to, again, I like to, I want you to see the color of my tip. It's a pretty bluish, silverish gold, okay? Nothing crazy about it, it's not turning black. But I want you to watch my solder. I'm gonna count to one, ready? One. My iron is hot and it's ready to go. So we're gonna tack solder this straight down and straight up, straight down, and straight up.
and one more. Straight down and straight up. So now we have our we have our kite tack soldered together, everybody. So now it's gonna stay together for us. We can maneuver it around, and now we don't have to worry about it. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here, we've got all this all done, and we'll be right back, and we're gonna talk a little bit about solder. So we just tack soldered our kite together, and I've set my iron off to the side, and I've done that for two reasons. Because I want it to sit there, and I want you to see that it's not changing colors or anything. It's staying the exact temperature that I want. But we're gonna talk a little bit about solder. Now, when you're soldering stained glass, please don't use any kind of solder except the solder that is manufactured specifically for stained glass applications. Now, there's two that I like to use because we don't wanna, you know, some of the uh, stained glass solders have a lot of trash in them. But when you're doing copper foil, you're gonna to wanna to use 60-40 solder. 60-40 being 60% tin, 40% lead. And this I found is probably, well, I think it is in my arsenal of tools, is the Canfield 60-40. It's a little bit pricey, of course, everything's pricey now, but I like the Canfield 60-40 when I'm copper foiling. And I because I do a lot of lead work, I use 50-50 on the lead because I enjoy working with the Victory White Metals and they're out of Ohio. So both of these, this is manufactured in New Jersey from Canfield and the Victory White Metals is manufactured in Cleveland. So these are American products. Please use only solder that's ma made and manufactured for the stained glass industry. You'll find you won't have any problems with it. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about one of the simplest pieces of equipment that's sitting on your workbench. We're gonna talk about rheostats just for a moment, and we're gonna talk about rheostats because they can control the temperature of your iron for you. Now, I like to use, and I did my test last week, and I made sure, because I, I wanted to know what temperature that I work at, and I explained to everyone that I like to stick my iron tip under the solder and it go one and it melt. Well, it does that, and I've been, since we've been talking, my rheostat has been sitting on number eight, and I'm gonna bring my soldering iron up, and I'm gonna show the camera that the tip on my iron has not turned blue or black or any other color. It's got a little bit from sitting on it right here, but I wanna show you what I do with that. If you take and you, now this, when I wipe this off, it's gonna turn like almost a, a light blue silver and a gold, look at that, okay? See that? See the, see the blue coming up? That's as hot as it's gonna get because I have my rheostat or my iron controller tuned in to number eight, and that's the temperature that I like to work with. Now, you don't need a rheostat if you have one of those really nice Heiko irons because that has a rheostat in the handle. You only need one rheostat to control the temperature within your iron. I want you to look at it now. We're just sitting here. Look at that. We're just sitting here. That iron is not turning black. It's not pitted. There's nothing wrong with it. So what the rheostat does is it's going to save your tip. It's going to give you the correct temperature to work with so that if you, because if you're working too hot, everybody, this foil will lift up. You'll actually burn that glue away and that foil will go from this to this and then you'll get flux or even patina trapped underneath of it so that when you think you've got it cleaned, it's still not completely cleaned and you may have an etching problem from the chemicals itself on your work. And none of us want that. So we're gonna, we flipped over our kite and we're gonna go ahead and tack solder this side. And then I'm gonna show you two individual ways to approach soldering your work. And remember, I'm not using a lot of flux, y'all. I mean, look at that. It's hardly, that brush is hardly, hardly even wet. So before we get started, I always like to just wipe off my tip. It's gonna turn back to that really pretty bluish silver gold color. And now, we're, like I said in the beginning, we are gonna, we're gonna tack solder this side, and then we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna talk about two different ways of soldering your work. So let's go ahead and get this. 
we're just tack soldering it. I tack solder flat because it's only holding it for a moment and we're gonna flip it over. And now I think we're all set and ready to go. So our first way to teach you how to solder is what I call the touch and go. Now, when I teach classes in person, this is the method that I use to start somebody out learning how to solder. It really works easily. It's less frustrating for the customer, and it shows them that they can actually do this and make it look right. So the first thing we're going to do is shake off our flux, and we're going to go from the top to the bottom on our kite. And the touch and go is one, two, straight up, one, two, just like that. You just touch the end of your soldering iron. One, two, one, two, one, two. And if you notice, when the solder hits the soldering tip, it kind of rolls back behind it, which helps beat it up. So here we go. We're going to repeat this touch and go soldering. And this is a surefire way if you're just starting out doing stained glass or if maybe you've been doing it for a while and still have trouble beating up. The one reason you may have trouble beating your solder up is you might be working too hot. And I'll refer we'll reference back to our wattage controller or iron controller for that reason. So here we go. We're just going to flux it a little bit. And now we're going to do our touch and go. Starting over here, one, two, 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 one, two. Now remember, when you come to this junction here, that's a cross, y'all, and it needs to look like one. So then it, to clean up your touch and go, you just on top, straight up, on top, straight up, just like that. And you know what happens? It beads up and it looks really nice. Let's start over here on this side. And we're going to one, two, 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 one, two. For everybody, we're going to take a moment and we're going to tin around the outside edges because eventually be, this, just keep it together, we're going to run some 20 gauge wire all the way around the outside and then we'll attach our hooks and our tail. But first... We're gonna go ahead and tin the outside of this project just like that. One, two. One, two, just like that, okay? So now we've tinned this side and we've touched and go this side. This side, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna show you how to run a bead. Now I've got my soldering iron adjusted just right. And that temperature, as I proved to myself the other night with a really nice thermal couple, was 510 degrees. And I've got it set on the same thing, the same process, same iron, and I'm just going to clean my tip a little bit. It's going to give us, see the gold coming up on that? That just tells me it's the perfect temperature, everybody. So let's do this. Before we start to run our bead, let's tin the outside of this side. Let's go ahead and tin it because we're getting ready to do some really crazy stuff. We're going to learn how to run a bead of solder. And the most important thing about that is that you can't really, you can't run it too fast. You have to keep up with the way, with the way that your solder is melting. So I found I enjoy working at a number eight temperature or a number eight number on my rheostat, which is about 510 degrees. So let's do this. We're gonna get our flux. We're gonna shake it off. I'm gonna put a little bit of flux right here and we're gonna do a cross this way. Now this, <clears throat> this we're gonna run a bead. And if you notice, I my soldering iron, the tip is tilted onto an angle. I'm using it at about, probably about 30 degrees and I'm gonna get it started. And then we're just gonna hold the solder above it. And you see, I'm giving it time to melt, okay? If you don't give it time to melt, it's not gonna do, it's not gonna do what you need it to do. So here we go. Let's talk about that and do it again. Here we go. You see that bead, if you get the temperature right on your iron, 
you can run it as slow or as fast as you want, but you feed the solder up here, okay? I'm feeding the solder from right here at the top of my tip. Ladies and gentlemen, you can run a bead, you can do the touch and go, it's all up to you, whatever makes it easier for you. And eventually you're gonna develop your own technique and all Ed's doing is trying to help you move along into developing your own technique. So we're almost doing like a touch and go method around the outside edge of this because I want it, I would like it to bead up and that's exactly what it's doing. And you can see it, it's nice and round right there on the top that I've done. So let's go ahead, we'll take it out, flip it over, and we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. And this is gonna give that copper foil quite a bit of rigidity. And it also, it just makes it look so much more professional when you finish the edges. Don't do everything else real nice and then not finish the edges of your, even if it's a sun catcher. Finish the edges and in a moment, we're gonna talk about how to clean this up correctly, okay? Here we go. This is looking good, everybody. It's all looking good. So when you're tinning the outside and beating up the outside of your sun catcher, you need to just, just try and keep everything level. And you can do that just by just by moving this glass back and forth with your fingers like that, okay? So there we go. We've got our touch and go on one side. We've got our run and our bead on the other. We've tinned everything. And now we're all set. So now what we have to do, because we're getting ready to patina it, the first thing I wanna do, I would like to go ahead and add my hanger over here, and then we're gonna patina it. I'm gonna show you the secret to patining your work after you've finished doing all this beautiful solder work. Hey, we're back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean this kite. We've soldered it, we've got flux all over it, my hands are fluxed up. And what I've done is I've put a little bit of baking soda in a bowl with some water, and I'm just gonna kinda of mix that around and now I'm gonna clean this window, this little sun catcher, this kite, like nobody's business, okay? So keep in mind, the baking soda is an acid neutralizer. So what we're doing with this, and this is the best way that black patina works on your work. So we've cleaned this off, I'm gonna be, I'll get this rinsed off and we'll come back and I'll show you how the patina works. So now we're just gonna talk a little bit about patina. Now they make a copper patina, they make a black patina, they make a patina for zinc. However, it doesn't matter which patina you use if your glass isn't cleaned correctly, it's just not gonna work for you. So what we've done is we've taken the kite, we've washed it with water and baking soda, rinsed it off, and now I'm gonna show you what happens. One, when this is clean. Now, I, I like to use a brush uh, when I use my patina, so here we go, let's try this. Watch how dark this gets and how fast it does it. Look at that. And it's, it's look at that. Now, this is your 6040 solder working with the tin. This black patina is designed to darken tin. So if we use our 6040 solder, guess what's gonna happen? and we clean it correctly. We have to clean it correctly. If you don't clean it correctly, it's not gonna look like this, I promise you that. And if your patina, when you put it on your window, isn't dark like this, it's, it's not cleaned out correctly. So this is our kite. We're getting ready to clean this up, and then we're gonna attach everything. And I wanna thank you all for tuning in because hopefully this solder video has helped you all out. And by using the touch and go method, your, new, your technique will develop into something where you can just work that bead and be so happy when you get done with it. 
If you like this video and you like any other videos that we have on our channel, please subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, when you subscribe, go ahead and click on that notification bell for us so that you're notified because we come to you every Monday night live with Q and A's. Here. Now we need to remove the patina residue and we need to go ahead and wax our kite when it's completed. So now our tail gets attached here by wire and then we're gonna do another little piece of wire to imitate the string hanging off of the kite. So by the time we put the tail on, it should hang like this and it should look like it's flying, which is really kind of nice. I love this little design. It's, very, it's a very nice project for you to start out with as a beginner project. And it doesn't matter how simple the projects are. Every time you build a project, y'all, you're gonna learn something different, okay? So now that I'm done here in the studio, we've got this kite cleaned up. I'm gonna turn my iron off here at the rheostat. We're gonna back it down to zero. I'm gonna take my iron. Now that it's started, see I've cut the power to it. Now it's starting to cool off. But when I get ready to use my iron again, I want it to look nice. I'm gonna take this excess solder right off the tip of my iron, wipe it down. And when I come back to it, my tip will look just like that. It's cooling off and there's nothing left on it and it's tinned. I don't have to tin it. If you don't put flux on your tip and if you do use a rheostat, you won't find yourself having to tin your tip. So that's a good idea. Try it, your work will change, I promise and you'll be much more satisfied with the way your work turns out. Turn my rheostat off, my iron is cooling down, I've wiped my tip, and the very last thing I'm gonna do before I head out is I'm gonna unplug my soldering iron from my rheostat, then there's no way in the world that it can do any harm while we're gone. Y'all, this is Ed, I'm in the studio with Barb. Thanks for tuning in to the RDRV channel.